They're going pretty well. Obviously, y'all know this was number five. Uh, three of which were in pads, two of them t-shirts. A lot of retention. Uh, great advantage, obviously, having the system in two years in a row. Uh, attitudes have been great. Work habits good. Uh, I, one of our primary focuses this year, already having our system in and, and knowing a little bit more about what we're doing, is it's been a real focus on personnel, getting people in the right place and trying to identify those people who didn't help us very much last year due to your age or inexperience or injury, seeing who's going to emerge and move up into that too deep and, and help us. So uh, we still got a long way to go, both from the standpoint of our improvement and both obviously from the standpoint of number of practices. So uh, we do have a, a few guys making some positive steps, but right now we've still got a long way to go and, and, a, and a lot of time for guys to make those moves. Justin mentioned that he wants the defense to be able to play at a faster pace. Is that something that you saw in your evaluation of last season? Well, it's just something that we're getting more and more of. And so uh, th th we just got to be prepared for it. We, we play at a fast pace here and, and, and do it in practice. So we, we get a lot of it. I, I've been to places where we didn't run a tempo offense, and that makes it very difficult. But uh, yeah, we just, now we do play some teams that, that do that go faster than we do. Uh, some of them just have that philosophy. Uh, Texas A&M was, Ole Miss was, uh, Missouri was. There were some teams who, they don't do as much when they go fast, so they can obviously uh, repeat plays and, and do it a little bit faster. But that's one of the things that we hope we can get a little bit cleaner on. It's, you know, as y'all have seen all the back and forth about the rule change and everything else, it's just something that's coming in college football right now. And you have to keep improving on it. So that end, what was your thoughts on the proposed rule change, which even though it's a table for now, it could be back a year from now? I, I don't really know. You know I, I think the slowdown guys are really not worried about injuries. And I think the speed up guys are really not worried about how many plays they get. I think everybody's trying to get their own piece of the pie. But the bottom line is the rules, you know. But uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how to I mean, I, it doesn't make any sense to me what was proposed. But if we want to go fast, I think what they'll do is they'll make the rule and have to snap the ball in 15 seconds so you get the late game. Uh, if you want to go slow, then we just need to go back to the old 25 second clock. But the whole thing, to me, is just people arguing for what they think is going to be an advantage to them. And it really doesn't matter because that, that's the rules and that's what we're going to play. Let's just talk about kind of shuffling some guys around up front on the defensive line and you know, kind of giving some different looks. How good is that in the spring to be able to do some of that? Well, it really hasn't been as much of a luxury as it's been a necessity. Uh, and in addition to being very thin at defensive end in spring practice, uh, we also got Elijah got a grow in the very first drill, the very first practice. So we've actually got Montrevious and Gabe working out at defensive end more as a necessity than, than a, uh, an evaluation. Uh, both of them do some pretty impressive things out there, but we need their depth and rotation in, in the interior line. So I don't foresee that being permanent, <clears throat> but it would be good that if we did have some unusual rash of injuries next year or something occur, those guys have got the ability to maybe go out there and help us. Can you talk about the star position this spring that you had in there? Well, Threesy had a, <coughs> excuse me, a broken hand. So he was very limited early. So we decided with Justin Garrett whether to go inside or star, we put him out of the star. He's had a good spring so far. McEnroe has made a lot of improvement. Uh, he came in obviously without the advantage of spring ball last year, and he really never got caught up uh, as a true freshman. But spring ball is really helping him. So he's had a couple of really good practices out there. And, we're seeing daily improvement out of him. Uh, whether Justin stays there or not, you know, all of that, there are a lot of factors in that equation. How deep do we build the depth of inside back? And how soon do we get the easy back? You know, there are all kinds of questions. But uh, he's been, Justin has been very unselfish in moving in, moving out, moving in, moving out. It's been probably hard on him to learn about but he's had a good spring so far, and right now we can't afford to move him. How good is it to have him as far as just a yeah, he had a great spring. He was on his way to a really good preseason, and then he had the foot injury. And by the time he came back, the reason he had established himself as a starter, and we thought Justin maybe could help us more in the box. But then he hurt his foot again. Uh, you know, I hope he returns with Justin Garrett. If y'all can remember back to this time last year, and y'all would ask us, did we find any of those impact plays? 
he was out, and uh, Justin Garrett was the guy. And then unfortunately he had an injury and didn't play many plays for us. So I hope he can return to the Justin Garrett that we remembered from last spring. What have you seen out of Derek Moncrief and Jonathan Ford at that safety spot? Moncrief has been an extremely pleasant surprise. Uh, when you get a junior college player who's not played in your system, uh, you always wonder how long it's going to take him to transition. He's making some mistakes out there, as you would expect. But uh, I think at this point, he is way beyond all of the new safeties. I say the word new, meaning those that we don't already know about, the whiteheads, the holesies, the guys that have been back there. We know what they can do. It's a matter of them just continuing to improve their craft and get better, uh, be better as leaders and players. But of the, of the rest of the bunch is fighting for those, those spots at the star boundary safety. He's been probably the most impressive. He's had a really good spring so far. He isn't here that he won't be available for the spring in Tulsi, but how does his return impact how you look at Moncrief, Jonathan Ford, Trevondre? Is Tulsi going to be the corner? Is he going to come back as a safety? Well, that, that's the all star. You know, that's it's one of those things I mentioned earlier. You know, Josh is big enough to play uh, boundary safety, big enough to play star. You know, we'd, we'd probably rather have a bigger star backer, but he could end up being the best star. We don't have any depth at linebacker, and we have to move Justin. Uh, boundary corner. Uh, that's a really critical spot in our roster. Uh, Mitch has made a good transition so far, but uh, Josh may end up moving back to boundary corner, you know, if we have to move Mitch around. So we've got a lot of flexibility. We've got a lot of moving parts. Uh, part of that's good, but to be truthful, I'd like to come out of spring with a little bit better idea about where they're all going to fit, and we can get a little better continuity. When we started having that rash of injuries last year during the season, a lot of our consistency was lost, and, and that's what could happen. So it may take spring and a little bit of preseason. We've got some good-looking freshmen that are going to come in, and you never want to count on them to solve your problems, but there's always some pleasant surprises in those groups, and I'm, I'm sure some of those will help us too. So you're talking about guys like Garrett moving around. You're talking about guys like Holsey moving around. And you're talking about some guys that, that have the ability to do that for us. But I think the sooner we get them settled in the right place, the better off we're going to be. You flip flopped uh, Chris and Casanova at linebacker. What have you seen out of them in a new spot so far? Some of it physically have been very good. Chris has made a real quick uh, transition and has looked really good. Uh, Casanova has been bothered by a bruised bone in his hip, and he has not been practicing very much. Uh, the, the three days he was healthy and full speed out there, he had some really good practices. Uh, if I had to throw a guess up there right now, and uh, both of them back to full speed, probably would leave McKinney and Mike and keep Frost at will. But even today's practice, Chris played both, both as the practice went on, he rotated both spots. And I, I'd like for him to continue to do that. Uh, you know, we, we had a lot of linebackers last year. It was sort of linebacker by committee. I'm not sure we're going to have that many guys. We get into a situation in the spring, excuse me, in the fall, where I really feel like we only got three guys that are ready. I want it to be able, the ability to play even one of those guys at my call will and get that third best guy on the field with him, wherever he is. If we develop some better depth, I see Casanova with Mike and Chris with him. What about the guys behind them? Who's that? What about the guys behind them? Doing okay. Lost I mean, uh, Flowers is having a better spring and uh, a little bit better. Uh, consistency that he's had in the past. He's doing some good things. I think he's still got a lot of improvement to do. Uh, Javier, unfortunately, I think could have benefited from spring ball more than any of them, and he broke that bone in his foot in the SEC championship game, and he will not practice in spring. But I certainly still feel like he's going to still be in the picture. Uh, Cameron Tony has caught on pretty well. You know, when you, when you put him on the scout team and decide to redshirt him, they don't give me any reps at your base defense. And, He's almost going back to square one, learning what he's doing. But uh, he's had a pretty solid spring. Uh, none of them have really jumped out and had any, anything dynamic. But I, I feel like I'm gaining some confidence in all of them. You've done some drills one-on-one, one-on-two one on with Kess and uh, Chris. What have you kind of gotten out of what was the thought process of doing that? Which was doing the what? You did like one-on-two drills just specifically with Chris and Cass uh, several times during the time we were there. So. Just, just basically a bit of fundamentals, uh, especially the coverage uh, aspects. They, they end up covering backside of the backfield quite a bit in our base defense, and they need to improve their fundamental skills quite a bit. Uh, so we, we've worked that a lot.
And we get good routes out of our backs too. It helps them. Is there anything this spring that you are finally being able to work on that you just weren't able to do so last spring or even last fall? Not really. Uh, we, we tried to, as a matter of fact, we may have gone too fast last year. We may have put too much in too quickly. Uh, but uh, this year, really, what we've been able to do is almost the reverse of that. We know our personnel better, and we know what they can do, and what we can be really good at, and what we don't need to be fooling with. And frankly, at this stage of installation and, and, and putting in schemes, we've done less this year than last year. What have you seen from Jonathan Jones over the corner this far, and some of the other corners, Trevon Reed moving to defense, uh, uh, Cameron Mountain, what have you seen from those guys? Yeah, well, Trevon's had a really good camp. Uh, he's still learning the system, but I think, you know, from, from Melvin's telling him one-on-ones, just cover skills and, and play the game, play in the position physically. He's been a really bright spot. We think he's going to help us tremendously. Uh, Jones, we just got to keep him healthy. We know he can play, and uh, he'll he'll have some, some roles to play. I'm sure on third down and long. Uh, but we're starting to build a little depth back again out there at corner. And the safety positions, there's depth there too. Their their progress has been a little less consistent. They still got a lot more. Uh, Consistency to build as far as trusting those guys in game situations, but but that's starting to look a lot better too. Ellis, if you had to play a game this weekend, who would be your third linebacker? Uh, tomorrow, probably Cameron Tom. Mm -hmm. Time for a few more. Was there ever any thought of uh, moving Drewsy around, maybe putting back at your safety or at a corner and moving somebody else in to start? I, you know, I could see possibly having to go to safety if we have some kind of disaster with. These guys not ever come to the, to the front as far as being good enough. But right now, we, we certainly haven't found a star that we, or two stars, I should say, that we can afford to move. Uh, he's got the cover skills. You know, he had the corner before he had to move. Uh, as fast as he is, he wasn't as natural a corner as you might think. He's a more of a contact player. Uh, but he can play deep zones as well as any of those guys we got out there. Uh, I don't see that happening. If, you know, it could in an emergency. What do you feel about the depth of the mm -hmm. work versus the spring going forward? What are we doing about it? What do you, what do you, how do you feel about it? Feels about a lot better. You know, you got Mincy back, Jones back, uh, TJ's improved quite a bit, and uh, Cameron Melton, you know, he's, he really is coming into being a really good, reliable player. Uh, we've got some good young ones coming in that I think are going to be okay as long as they can learn what we do. They're going to be physically really good. Uh, starting to develop some depth out there. Rudy forward in the safety position. Rudy's, other than making some mistakes just from lack of repetition, Rudy's made some really good plays for us. What's Anthony Swain's status with the program? I, he right now is working on some some things through the semester that have got to be taken care of before we can even approach it. You, you mentioned yeah. quite a few guys who are being done about it. When when are you expecting these guys back? I mean, with Darius out, Holsey out, uh, uh, you said Javier's out. Easy with a broken hand, Elijah with a grind. There's a lot of these are yeah, players. Yes, it hurts you consistently. The first two you mentioned, they will not practice, period. Javier and, and Ladarius, those breaks in their foot were too close to the season, so they won't be back. Right now, we could be practicing Holsey. We're just erring on the side of caution. He's doing some one on one stuff, and maybe, maybe out there a little bit of some pass scale, I haven't noticed. But he, he is on the, if, it, if we were getting ready to line up and play next week against Arkansas, he'd be ready to go. He's been playing here, he had two years under his belt, one year under our system. We know what he can do. We're just kind of airing on the side of caution with him. The others are day to day. We hope to get Elijah back next week. The groins can be funny, but we're hoping to get him back next week. Who was the other one mentioned? Therese. Uh, yeah, he's out there practicing right now. But sort of like Holsey, we know what he can do, so we just we kind of baby him a little bit with the number of reps and the type of drills, so he doesn't bang that hand and break it and start all over again. Got one more? Yeah, Ellis, you've mentioned how much things have changed in college sports, you know, ever since you first got into it. And then you know, yesterday, the the National Labor Board Relations kind of you know, ruled that Northwestern players could unionize. I mean, do you feel like that's inevitably where college sports is headed? I don't know. I, I might continue with the NLR. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't even sure what they are. <laughs> we had a players' union when I played. It was called L Company in uh, Third Battalion. So that was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about that. It's getting too complicated for me. 